Hi, everyone, and welcome to PYA Crew Spotlight. My name is Ria. I am your host. And today I'd like to welcome Captain Frank Katsuris. Yes, correct. How are you? Uh, yeah, very good. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah, you as well. Well, thank you so much for coming on board. The reason I wanted to ask you here today was I wanted to know your journey into yachting. Um, where are you from and what got you into yachting? Listen, I'm French. Nobody's perfect. What can we do? <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, no, I'm from a small town called beaulieu sur mer close to Monaco. Uh, I've been lucky enough to live in this town all my life. Uh, my father was a yacht captain back in the 80s already. So basically I start to be on water since I'm eight years old. And I've been um, sailing since I'm eight, nine years old and racing since I'm 10 years old for the Yacht Club of Monaco all my life, most of my life. So uh, yeah, I'm from this south of France, which I like it and I hate it also because uh, the thing is when you grow in a med, you know, when you start to do your career in a med, I started yachting, I was 16 years old. My first career was 16 years old. I worked for a very important French person on the sailboat. I started on sailboats. And uh, at 20 years old, I said, that's it. That's what I want to do. So I started to find uh, a boat to cruise around the world because I never wanted to cruise in the mess because everybody's doing this, correct? And it still does with 30 years later, you know? So I always wanted to find some new adventures. And at these times, everybody was going to Caribbean, you know? Which I said, I don't want to go to Caribbean because everybody's going to Caribbean. So I found a boat who was going to the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. So back in 1992, <laughs> that was my first boat as a, a first mate. I end up uh, cruising for uh, for three years in the Red Sea and uh, staying in, in Seychelles for living in Seychelles for one year, cruising in one year back in the nineties. So that was a good time of yachting, I think. <laughs> the owner was joining us uh, every kids' holiday. You know, at the time we didn't have internet, so they were sending telex to tell us, "Oh, I'm coming next month or in two months' time." So we had a good time. And since I said, that's it, you know, I want to become a captain. So I end up working back in, uh, in a med, which for our work for, uh, I've been, always been grateful for this person is Christopher Jones, who was the CEO of the PYA at the time, at the beginning. He gave me the chance as a French on a British boat, imagine. <laughs> but since I never stopped. And then, um, yeah, I met my wife at these times, and I always said to my wife, I want still to go cruising, and I end up to find a job in the Philippines. And I end up uh, working in Philippines and in Asia for six years, been based in the 1997s, uh, 96, 97 in Philippines and Asia. So that was a great, great experience, to be honest. You know, back in the 90s, it was fantastic. And uh, also talking about the PYA, good of the PYA because we learned about the, the class four at the time, you know, the master of 3000. So they put everything online and said, hey guys, you know, everybody finish with the yacht master, you need to do your, your big license now. So I left Asia in 2001 and I ended up doing my courses in the US to do my class four. And been cruising in the US for six, seven years or so. Yeah, or Caribbean, US, all over the US, you know, except Alaska, all over Alaska, but I've never been. And since, well, I never stopped basically cruising the world and nonstop, you know. So yes, I'm back in South of France. This is my home. This is my uh, Nid d'amour, comme on dit in French. <laughs> and then, uh, but keep traveling. Yeah, keep traveling. Yeah, as I said, I just came back from a free, uh, three months cruise in, uh, in the Maldives. So I like to be on the move. Yeah, I'm the kind of captain who like to move and travel. So as a captain, what would your advice be to young crew coming up or people considering becoming yachting? What is the most amazing thing about yachting? Um, and what kind of advice would you give them uh, in order to climb the ranks, as it were? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, actually, I was on the phone with one of my old first mate uh, an hour ago. 
uh, and I push him to become a captain. So I give him a job as a captain for his cap first captain boat. He's going to do his interview next week. But uh, yeah, young crew, go for it. Go for it. If you like to travel, if you like to uh, to live with other people. The only thing is, you know, I think the negative point, some people don't like it, but you have to live with, with five, six, seven, 10, 12, 20 crew, you know? And that's not easy every day, you know? So, but if you... If you have brothers and sisters, you've been raised with brothers and sisters, it's easy, you know, it's easy to, to accept it and you can handle the problems, you know, but which is not a problem anyway. So, yeah, no, for every young crew, go for it, you know, do your SCCW and start as a deccan, start as a junior two and be motivated, you know, and then go for it, you know, go, go, push, push, push. Do your license, always do some courses, upgrade your courses, don't go on holidays, you are 20 years old, you don't need to go on holiday, you don't need uh, time off. So during this time off, go and do some courses, go to any school uh, around the world, get better, and then this is the only way to step up, you know, and my only advice is don't find a boat who's doing uh, two months cruising mad season or something, find a boat to doing a world tour, find a boat to cruising. And this is the only way you're going to learn, you know, drive a tender, see the world, meet other people, you know, and this is where you get better in the world, you know, that's what, that's is my advice. So you would advise them definitely that yachting is a place to be and a great place to be, a great place to make a career and, and a great place to make financially rewarding income as well i imagine oh, of course yeah of course yeah even though it's changing a little bit now with all these taxes and 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 everything but uh go for it yeah this is the only place where you can save money i think you know it's not a normal job in a shore yet you can save 50 percent of your salaries you know i always say to my crew to the youngest crew take 50 percent of salary put it on your bank invest it put it in a stock exchange and in 20 years it will make some babies and you you know you can buy your first apartment or something like this so go for it go for it yeah yeah and if you like to travel if you like to please people the only thing in yachting industry what i found is it's with some young crew it's very important to know for me is you you need to like to give to people you know you really have to give to people you know if you don't like to give to people forget about this industry you know, it's like working on a five-star hotel, you know, if you don't want to give to people as, or as a waiter or as a chef, you know, on a restaurant, do your best, go for it, you know, and if you don't like to do this, do something else because you will not like it, you will not like it, you will be, you will not be happy, you will not be happy. Well, Captain Frank, you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure to interview you. You have uh, such an energy and excitement for the industry, and it does portray it very, very well. And we're glad to have hosted you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you once again. You have been watching the PYA Crew Spotlight. My name is Ria. I have been your host. Please tune in again for another episode. Hi everyone and welcome to the PYA Crew Spotlight. My name is Rhea, I am your host and I'm really pleased to introduce Sandra Jordan. She is the yacht purser. How are you, Sandra? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me, Rhea. No, thank you for joining us. Now, the reason we have you here is we are doing the Crew Spotlight for the PYA and this is all about you and how you got into yachting and what you feel the yachting industry has done for you and for your life. So tell us your story. All right. Well, I, I am one of the yachties who landed my bum in the butter back in 2006 when the yachting industry was really, really small and it wasn't all over social media. And so there was a much higher demand for crew than there were jobs. So because... Um, I had friends who had completed the SCCW and done a season in France, and then they'd come back and told us all about this yachting industry. I, I went to do my CW and luckily had somebody who needed a stewardess. They were based in MB92 in, in Barcelona, and they were looking for a stew on the yacht. It was a um, 55 meter. And I just happened to know that chief stew's a younger brother we went to university together and another friend of mine had also met them uh, during their yachting journeys the year before so they put us in touch i applied for the job we did a, a skype interview back then because it wasn't zooms so we did a skype interview and i was hired so 
without ever having stepped on a yacht. I was flown from Johannesburg, where I was living at the time, to Barcelona and commenced my yachting career. So it was, yeah, very, very exciting. And um, I was fortunate enough to uh, find a really, really great, great boat with a great captain and crew. And um, yeah, I think it, I've sort of never really looked back. I've done quite a few things between that. Uh, I've gone back to university to study again and I've worked as a, an editor in a magazine, but yeah, um, I think I worked on yachts for over 10 years throughout my career. Well, when mm. you were sort of first growing up in your formative years, what was the career goals that you had? I assume that it wasn't that you <laughs> wanted to be a yachty as a career goal. No, no. So for me, I, my dad is a pilot. and He was a pilot. So he worked for South African Airways and I went to university. So after school, I went to university. I studied what's called a business science. So uh, it's a four-year honours degree. Um, I specialised, first of all, in chartered accounting for the first two years and actually switched to the law stream to finish off. So kind of covered a large range of, sub, uh, like a large series of subjects, uh, including like stats and economics and finance, accounting, law, human resources, strategy, you know, all, all of those kind of things. Um, I mean, really, really large amount of subjects. But I actually after that applied to the South African Airways cadet pilot program and what it was is they took 12 people a year through the uh, training that is needed in order to work for a big commercial airline and they essentially paid for your for your training so um, obviously being a woman it was that was one of the things they were looking for for women they were also looking for um, non-Caucasian people to go through their training as well to try and you know have a more diverse and inclusive airline industry and I actually made it all the way through so from thousands of applicants I made it all the way through to the final 24 mm -hmm. so there was 24 of us left and they were going to choose 12 and that's when I um, got the call about the the yacht job and and left so I think for me probably the biggest biggest thing is that I always had this really big you know desire to travel the world um, I'd, I'd been lucky enough to to have gone to many many countries before that just as the daughter of an airline pilot so um yeah but I wasn't quite sure you know I studied something at university that I, I wasn't 100% interested in you know so it's it's tough I think for me the yachting industry really fulfilled that need for travel um and I think that working in luxury hospitality it's very rewarding as well so it's just that um you get a lot of sense of pride in what you're doing so just the work that you do you know that you're at the top of your game in terms of um the service that you're providing and you also you get to interact with people you you couldn't get access to in, in just a regular normal job. You know, it's these very, very ultra high net worth individuals, celebrities, royalty. So from that point of view, it's just really, really super exciting. Um, and so the skill set that you develop, the, the um, you know, yes, you can train for things in hospitality and service, but I think that understanding etiquette and protocol and, and just, just seeing this different world, it also gives you something to aspire to. And, just yeah like a different perspective on life as well well let me ask you I mean there are two different paths once you get into yachting one is eventually that you want to go shore based and the other is that you want to continue on in yachting and retire after having achieved you know whether it be captain or engineer or, or chief steward or whatever mm -hmm. it is that you sort of want to achieve in yachting um, how did that set you up because you obviously decided that you wanted to go shore based how did yachting help you set, set you up for that Right. Um, well, I don't think it was something that I necessarily chose. Um, it was more, yeah, you know, for me, um, I, I fell pregnant. And as most women do in yachting, that is the end of their career. So, you know, it was, it wasn't something that I, well, I had thought about the concept for the yacht purser before that. I'd actually started, I'd registered the domain name. I'd identified the fact that when I moved into a personal role, I felt really unsupported and I felt like there was not a lot of information out there on, on the personal role and there weren't good mentors and, and, and um, yeah, just not a lot of support. So for me, I, I had actually wanted to go into a management company. I briefly worked for WICO in 2007 and they managed my first fleet of yachts. So, you know, I had a really good relationship with them and I really enjoyed that. So 
Um, I think that that was always my aim to go into the yacht management side of things, but also really difficult to do if you want to live in South Africa. So I am based in South Africa in Cape Town now. And I think that for me, the, the biggest thing working on, on board and also coming from the background that I did with, uh, you know, the extensive university education that I had, I also studied the super yacht management diploma. I have a, another tourism diploma, studied project management at a master's level. So I think all of that combined would just put me in a really, really good position to create the course that I did for Yacht Purses, which is now accredited through uh, the guest program with IAMI. And it's, it's something that I'm really passionate in because knowledge and information is always something that is going to help you to feel more confident in your role and feel more supported and also just, you know, give you a better um, foundation for the work that you're doing. You know, I think that, yeah, you can't go, you can't ever go wrong by learning new things. You know? And it's, it's just. For those yeah, people that are looking at getting into yachting at this stage or considering the option of making it a career mm -hmm. choice, what type of advice would you give? I think for new crew getting into the industry, uh, the, the biggest gap that I see for them is that, you know, they think that working on a yacht is just maybe cleaning a hull or setting a table or, you know, they, they don't really understand the very complicated nature of a luxury hospitality industry. So at the end of the day, being professional is just really, really important and understanding how to conduct yourself and the fact that, you know, it is grueling hours. It's really great grueling hours and you have, you're working in very small spaces and environments. So, you know, you do have to learn to be quite flexible and also to have a really good, um, you know, you, you, you put in, in very testing and trying circumstances sometimes and very stressful circumstances. So being able to build that resilience and also not take things personally, I think is very, very important. Um, you know, it upskill as much as you can. You know, you, 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 there's just a, a large number of training schools who specialize in, in training new crew and providing them that, that, that gap between coming from shoreside to working on a yacht. So again, you know, don't expect that you'll just be provided with this training on board. Yes, there's always going to be an element of training you for that specific yacht. But, you know, if you come onto, into the industry without knowing how all the different departments are, you know, how they're related and what they do and, you know, some of the things that you can do to create these next level guest experiences is always just going to be so valuable. So I think that, yeah, just getting a good understanding of the yachting industry is, is always a good idea. And what is the most positive aspect about yachting that you would encourage people to, to look forward to? For me, yachties are people who get things done. They get things done. They will find a way. They are just very, very good problem solvers. I see yachties when they leave the yachting industry just being very, really, um, if they're moving into a, a shore-based role, so moving ashore, uh, you know, because they're used to working under such great deals of stress, they can be put in stressful situations and be more resilient than their land-based counterparts who've never worked at sea. So I think it's also traveling gives you a very good and unique perspective on different cultures and tolerating different cultures. And so, um, you know, being able to just um, have a better perspective on, on humanity. And, you know, I see even now living back in South Africa, you can see the people who've traveled on the people who haven't. You can see the people who uh, even have worked in yachting and who haven't. Um, you know, I would hire a yachty over a normal, regular land-based professional any day because I know that yeah they've they've just got a different mentality about completing work and and yeah just getting things done well you know what Sandra we really appreciate your time we know that you're an extremely busy lady because you have built yourself up a very successful business after having left well the <laughs> seaside of yachting um, yeah. once again we thank you for your time we thank you for your time no it's all good for me you know I, I really, I, I love to see new crew coming into the industry and I love to see just how each person has a different experience in yachting. And, it, you know, sometimes it's not all good, but at the end of the day, I find that also being able to 
look at things in a, in a positive way sometimes and being grateful for what you have rather than resentful of what you think you deserve can often be the difference between enjoying a job and a position and not. So I'm not saying that if you, if somebody, if you're in a really bad situation and, and there's legally issues of that, that you shouldn't complain. Absolutely. You should. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think sometimes the things that we think are maybe uh, just, you know, Oh, I don't like this person on board or that one, blah, blah, blah. you know, everything can be solved also with communication. And I think that that's just really, really important is just to have a, a very good open line of communication. Um, if you are going through some things personally, we all are human beings, we all go through things. And, you know, being clear that maybe you need a bit of additional help or support, um, is, it sometimes goes a long way to just understanding everyone on board. Thank you very much for your words of wisdom. Once Thank again, you. <laughs> you've been watching another episode of PYA Crew Spotlight. This has been Sandra Jordan, the yacht purser. We'll provide all of her information mm -hmm. below as well as the PYA. My name is Ria. I have been your host. Please tune in again for another episode.